Hey everyone, so I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about a couple of uh, other wines that are on the glass list that I've noticed just in conversation with a few people uh, throughout the restaurant that um, <clears throat> maybe you're not as confident on um, as some of the others. So uh, one of those wines that kind of came to my attention was uh, fairly new to the list, the Hugel uh, Gentil. Um, it is replacing the Hatch Bianco um, as sort of our cheapest wine that's listed on the By the Glass selection. Uh, the Hatch Bianco, of course, still being available, certainly on happy hour, but if somebody wants it, you know, we can do it by the glass, not a problem. Um, I haven't deleted the button. Um, but the Hugo Gentil at the $12 price point is a, is a, is a fantastic wine um, that, you know, even though it's inexpensive, is it, super um, appropriate for our menu in a number of different ways. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the region, I'm going to talk a little bit about the grapes, I'll talk a little bit about kind of why I think it's a great pairing uh, for a number of dishes on our menu right now. Um, so I'll start with the region, um, Alsace. Alsace is a region in France um, that kind of forms the, the border between France and Germany, okay? So this was a, a region in um, France that historically has traded hands with the Germans a number of different times. Basically every time the uh, the French win a war, they get Alsace, and every time the Germans win a war, uh, they get Alsace. And of course, as we know, uh, the French uh, won the last war, um, and it's kind of stayed in French hands. So if there's another war in the future, you know, maybe the Germans will get it back. Um, but for right now, it is a French region. Um, uh, nonetheless, you know, it's got a lot of Germanic influence. There's a lot of German speakers, uh, a lot of French speakers with funny accents, a lot of German grapes. Um, you know, think of grapes like Gewurztraminer and Riesling. Uh, are very much German grapes, both in their origin and how they sound, um, as well as the bottle shape. I mean, this is the, the standard fluted um, bottle shape that you know you would find in the Mosul Valley or in Rheingau or in places in Germany. Okay, the French bottle shapes are more like the Burgundy bottle, the classic Burgundy bottle, or the Bordeaux bottle. Uh, you don't see this much in other places in, in France, with, with some exceptions. Um, so you can definitely think of this as a region that kind of straddles two um, different cultures and two different nations and two different languages. Um, the grapes in this region are known for being aromatic, okay? So you need to, when you hear the word Alsace, you need to think of aromatic grapes. You gotta think of it being an aromatic wine. I can't even really think of an exception, um, stylistically in Alsace for uh, a wine that is Alsatian and classically so, and not aromatic, okay? They're all going to be aromatic. And for the most part, Alsatian wines are dry, okay? They're not sweet wines. They might have a fruitiness to them. They might offer the perception of some sweet um, character, um, but they are not going to be sweet wines, okay? Very rare uh, exceptions to that. Um, think of Alsatian wines as dry, aromatic wines. Um, as for the grapes that are involved, um, Alsace has a category of grape called, I guess, the noble grape is what they call it. Um, and it's a pretty formal category of four grapes um, that are considered by the Alsatians to be their best grapes, okay? Um, the most important of those is Riesling. Um, that's noble grape number one. Uh, number two would be Muscat. Um, as we know, Muscat is often expressed sweet, although in Alsace you get dry wines. Um, known for being very aromatic, very peachy, floral, lots of acacia, honeysuckle, peaches, apricots, uh, some melon character. It's just very, very pr profuse. Um, there is also Pinot Gris, um, which tends to maybe be a little bit more savory, um, especially in its Alsatian expressions, can have a little bit more sort of canned mushroom, uh, but still nonetheless will have a kind of apricot, stone-fruited, and floral character. Um, and then the last of those being uh, Gewurztraminer. And Gewurztraminer has a kind of spiciness, uh, sort of white pepper, um, as well as lots of uh, sort of acacia, honeysuckle, um, uh, peaches, nectarines, that kind of thing as well. But, but white pepper spice, particularly in Gewurztraminer. Um, as well as in Gewurztraminer, a little bit of like a sort of a, almost a tannic kind of phenolic persistence um, on the back of the palate. So uh, those are the four noble grapes of Alsace. So you get Riesling, uh, Muscat, Pinot Gris, Gewurztraminer. Okay, there are other grapes grown as well. You see Pinot Blanc and you see uh, Sylvaner is kind of maybe the other two that are most prominent. There's a little bit of Pinot Noir grown as well. I mean, a handful of other things, depending on what people want to grow. But, you know, if you want to have a Grand Cru vineyard uh, in Alsace, um, it, it almost always has to be uh, one of the four noble grapes. Uh, the Hugel Gentil is a blend basically of all of those different grapes, okay? 
plus the two non-noble grapes, but it's got all four of the noble grapes plus two of the um, ignoble grapes. I don't, I don't know what to call those. Regular grapes. 50% um, Riesling, um, and then a blend of uh, basically Gewürztraminer, Pinot Gris, Muscat, Sylvaner, Pinot Blanc. Okay, it's kind of a shit mix of all of the different grapes. Uh, so it tends to be quite aromatic. Um, Riesling, think of Riesling as always having high acidity. It's always got high acidity. I can't think of an example of Riesling um, that is a good example that is also low in acidity or even medium. It is always high in acidity. So you can think of this wine as having the, the, the high acid uh, structure of Riesling. Um, and then layered on top of that uh, is a lot of the aromatics uh, from the other grapes that contribute to the you know, already aromatic profile of Riesling. Um, Acidity is also an important part of the structure of a wine and the, why the, way, the way the wine feels um, in your mouth. Um, it, it provides a kind of a tightness and a leanness uh, to the wine very often, um, and it keeps the flavors a bit more focused. Um, so this, this wine, despite it having a lot of other aromatic stuff going on, it's not a broad or rich style. It's not uh, super light, but it, it, it does have a bit of richness, but it, it's all held together with that laser beam of acidity. Uh, that, that Riesling is known for. This wine can be described quite simply as a dry, aromatic blend based on Riesling. Okay, it is a dry, Riesling-based, aromatic um, blend um, that is refreshing. Uh, it's super good when it's really cold. It's a great patio wine for that reason, is that it's got that kind of happy summertime, springtime uh, uh, aromatic profile. Um, but it is also refreshing. Nobody really wants to be drinking a, you know, a 16% Zinfandel, a gooey, rich red wine or something like that on, on a patio, right? You want something cold and crisp and refreshing. People are going to drink Pinot Noir out there. They're going to drink um, this out there. They're going to drink white wines out there. They're going to drink their Rieslings. They're going to drink their sparkling wines, as they should. It's the patio season. You want something bright and fresh. As for the pairings uh, that this wine uh, is going to work really well with, um, it is paired on the prefix menu. It was previously the dino menu, but now the prefix menu with the curry cauliflower. We kind of brought this on really for that dish. Um, aromatic wines and aromatic food. Okay, just remember that as, a, as an important principle in pairing. Okay, you want to match uh, uh, aromatics when a dish is aromatic, otherwise the wine will just get lost. Um, in that flavor and uh, aroma composition. Um, so the curry cauliflower is an aromatic dish. It's got a lot of like South Asian and Southeast Asian uh, kind of influence. Um, as we know, obviously lots of cauliflower, which is a little bit neutral, but really it's the curry spices uh, in there that contribute the aromatics and the sweetness from the raisins. Okay, this is stuff that um, uh, is all really important. You get the sweetness in the dish from the raisins. You want a, at least a little bit of fruitiness in the wine, if not any you know, direct sugar-based sweetness. This wine, again, is dry, it doesn't have any sugar in it, very little, um, but nonetheless it's got that concentration of fruit uh, that gives the perception of some sweetness. So um, that sort of perceived sweetness plus the raisins works, and then the aromatics of the wine with the aromatics of the dish, you know, that works well um, also. So, um, but if you, we had other dishes on the menu, maybe in the future, you know, we've got a, a Thai basil dish or something like that, you know, this is going to be a wine that goes well with that. I suspect we're going to be selling a fair bit of this um, over the summer. You know, we're not selling a ton right now. I think a lot of it is based just on the fact that it's the cheapest white wine by the glass. Uh, you know, that's going to create a certain demand just for this wine. Um, not, not because of the wine itself, but because of the category it's in, uh, price-wise. So, um, but push it on the patio. If people are kind of asking for something cheap and cheerful, you know, don't hesitate to recommend this. It's $12 a glass. I think I put it on $56 or $57 a bottle. Super delicious. People will enjoy it. Um, and uh, it's got the structure and the acidity to go well with, you know, the seafood tower would be a good pairing with this, actually. You know, it's got the, um, the acidity and the freshness and the minerality to go with the oysters up top, but on the bottom part of the, uh, the seafood tower where you get more of the salads, and the, right now we've got the cucumber um, gazpacho and the uh, crab louie, it's going to fit in with, uh, with all of that also. So. Make sure you're tasting it the next time you, uh, you come in if you haven't tasted it already. Uh, and if you're struggling to sell it or explain it to a, a guest, um, or you're just serving the curry cauliflower and you want a couple things to say, um, hopefully this video kind of helps you uh, handle that, okay? Aromatics with aromatics, dry aromatic wine from Alsace. There you go.